So you want to get a record deal, but no one at a record label wants to deal with you or your music. Well, good news. I'm going to teach you how to score a record deal in this video, but only if you click like right now. Everybody knows that the second you sign a record deal, you instantly become rich and famous. Assuming you're not in the 99% of artists who totally flop within the first year of getting a deal and end up having to go beg their old manager at Walmart to hire them back. That's right. 99 out of every 100 acts signed to a major label fail. But you won't. Probably. Is it worth shooting for that 1% chance? Not according to this guy. He took a chance on an independent music career, and so far, it's paid off big time. In the old days, you needed a label to go anywhere. Now, you can find success and even top the Hot 100 without a label. So why would you even want to get a record deal in today's world? Let's look at the pros and cons, but not in that order. Con number one. If you sign a record deal, then you have to deal with record executives. What's the deal with record execs? They're all a bunch of soul-sucking monsters that see you not as an artist, but only as a dollar sign, which might be fine if you're tied dollar sign, since after all, that kind of thinking would be totally on brand. But for the rest of us, we'd prefer to be seen as human beings and not dollar signs who happen to write songs. Number two, they own your ass. Okay, the label might not literally own your ass. They might insure it for $28 million, but they don't actually own it. What they do own is all the music you worked your uninsured ass off to create. You write the songs, you perform the songs, you record the songs at your own expense, and you promote the songs. Then the label profits from the songs, since you gave them exclusive ownership of the masters and the contract you are more than happy to sign, but too excited to actually read. Number three, you're stuck. Abusive relationships can be really hard to get out of. Not recording contracts, they're fucking impossible to get out of. Now, I'm not making fun of abusive relationships. I'm making fun of record contracts. You can't help but laugh at how absurdly they're worded. Hitherto, Clause 417B, Section 12, in conjunction with Paragraph 43 of Clause 19, the artist will produce no more than 12 masters, but no fewer than 17? The fuck? Record labels use convoluted, intentionally confusing language to make sure they have all the power and the artists have none. Say you sign a five-album, eight-year deal, but after six months, the label decides your subgenre of electronic gangster folk isn't cool anymore, so they refuse to release any of your music. Then another label, a powerhouse in the gangster folk world, comes along and wants to give you $5 million for a one album, one year contract. Well, guess what? Tough shit. You can't sign a fucking thing for the next seven and a half years, except the forms when you file for bankruptcy because you spent the advance from your eight year deal in eight days. Number four, say goodbye to creativity. You know that ballad you put every last ounce of both your heart and soul into writing that you love so much? or the banger you envisioned as being everyone's favorite song of the summer? Well, the label says your ballad sucks and your banger isn't commercial enough, so neither will ever see the light of day. But the awful, cheesy, whack, derivative, played out song you wrote as a joke while in the bathroom taking a shit, that's the song the label's gonna push as a single, the song you'll end up being known for for all eternity, and the song you'll have to perform at every single concert you play until the day you fucking die. Now, let's look at the pros of signing a record deal. Number one you get to say you're signed to a record label. That's literally the only pro of getting a record deal in today's world. But it can be totally worth it. There's nothing more satisfying than rubbing it in the faces of your much more talented musician friends that you are on a major label and they're not. Nanny, nanny, boo, boo, record deal, fuck you. So how do you actually go about getting a record deal? I'm gonna deal you those cards right now, but only after you subscribe to this channel. Number one, image is everything. Stop wasting so much time working on your music when you should be working on your image. Record labels don't sign artists who make good music. They sign artists who look like they make good music. That's why the chart top selling artists are on is called the Billboard Hot 100 and not the Billboard Sound Good 100. You don't have to sound good, you just have to look good. Number two, nepotism. You don't need to be the child of a famous musician to get a record deal, but it certainly helps. I'm not gonna lie, Party in the USA is one of the catchiest pop songs of all time, but if Miley's achy breaky father hadn't been the king of commercial country, nobody ever would have heard Party in the USA. So if you're related to a famous musician, no matter how bad they, their ego, and their music totally sucks ass, definitely play up the relationship. Number three, send unsolicited demos. You could spend your time improving your music, playing local shows, networking with other musicians, posting interesting and entertaining content on social media, and building up a following of loyal fans so that hopefully record deals will eventually take notice and offer you a deal. Or you could bypass all that bullshit and force record execs to take notice by sending unpolished, unsolicited copies of your demo to their office, their home, 
maybe even their mistress's home and office. But don't stop there. Leave a copy of your demo on the windshield of their car, in their locker at the gym, even hand one to their kid as they're leaving school. Sure, you might annoy them at first, but the more unwanted crap you send them, the more they'll appreciate the initiative and eventually grow to like you. They might even tell execs at other record companies about what an awesome, totally non-creepy go-getter you are and how they should definitely open up all the unsolicited packages that you send them. Number four, become famous. Getting a record deal doesn't guarantee that you'll become famous, but being famous pretty much guarantees you can get a record deal. Lots of actors act like they have musical talent, which causes record label execs to act on their desire to make money by offering those actors a record deal. Clint Eastwood got a deal. The Hoff got a deal. Hell, they even gave a deal to both Captain Kirk and Spock. But you don't have to be a famous actor to be offered a record contract. They also regularly throw deals at famous basketball players, famous baseball players, famous boxers, even famous wrestlers. It doesn't matter what you're famous for, just become famous for something that isn't music, and in no time, record execs will be begging you to make music, offering you lucrative record contracts. Number five, if all else fails and you still feel the need to tell people you got a record deal, start your own label and sign yourself. Kanye West did it and you know he'd never do anything crazy. Even the Beatles did it. You might not have millions of adoring fans like Kanye or the Beatles, but you can have your own record label. Then you can sign yourself and you'll finally be able to say you got a record deal, allowing you to look down on your indie artist friends even though they have 10 times more followers than you on Spotify. And that's how you get a record deal. People sometimes ask me, hey, Ellis Michaels, would you ever sign to a major label? And I always give the same answer. Fuck no. Unless, of course, the person asking is someone who works at a major label, then this bird sings a very different song. For a large enough advance, I'll not only sign over the rights to all my songs, but whatever is left of my fractured little soul. You're so 